We are ready to kick off another week on One Soccer Today. Jenkins, Wilson, Wheeler, and Platt with you. I'm not sure what happened for you guys this weekend, but we had a pretty big day on Saturday. All of the questions about would they, won't they, can they, should they have been answered because despite it not always being the prettiest of performances, Canada do punch their ticket to the 2024 Copa America with a 2-0 win over the Soka Warriors. Kyle Lahren, Jacob Schaffel, they get the goals we've heard plenty from jordan and i so i'm going to turn the microphones over to the man who called the game and the man who running the show behind the scenes in the one soccer studio for their monday morning let's call them sober thoughts the anticipation the excitement hasn't gone away but we've let it settle in a bit oliver haven't we that canada's going to be playing against Lionel messi argentina and some massive south american nations so let's start with your takeaways were you impressed with the win was it enough just to get the win how are you feeling this morning um i can't say i was particularly impressed by the performance but ultimately they, they got the job done and, and that's all that really matters i i don't think it was a performance from canada that is going to change any opinions in terms of maybe the way people were feeling uh going into the match it's not going to dissuade people that you know maybe there needs to be some some change here some fresh ideas some fresh impetus um, and once again, you know, you have to give credit to Kyle Aaron, who in in a lot of these big moments in, in tight games comes up with, with a moment of quality, as he did uh, with what was not a great chance, but he made it look pretty easy. So um, that's someone who consistently delivers for Canada. But look, they, they qualified and, and I've got kind of a couple of reasons why I'm feeling optimistic and, and not too concerned about the, the level of the, the performance Canada turned in. One is that I just think that team looked very anxious uh out there on the pitch mm. um you know you, you could see in the week that they were kind of putting a, a brave face on it being very steely looking very in, in intent about about this game um but i think in the end there, there was clearly a lot of weight on their shoulders for, for someone like stefan Estacchio captaining the team for the first time with the the, con the the concern or the threat of of being the captain who who loses the game where where you don't qualify for the copper america i think that was weighing on on this team in terms of their performance at times and uh, they never really got into a rhythm uh, and you could see there was a video Canada soccer put out of the players coming back into the locker room and the first thing Estacchio says is what a relief uh, and I think that that spoke volumes uh, about maybe the way the team was feeling going into this game hopefully that weight is now lifted now they've secured a qualification the second thing I'd say is that you look at the the next five games for this team and it could change obviously depending on friendlies that get arranged or if they progress in Copper America but right now it's Netherlands, Argentina, Peru, Chile, and Mexico. Um, these games are not going to look anything like the game they played against Trinidad and Tobago on Saturday. They're going to be much more difficult games, obviously, but they're going to be a completely different style of games as well. Canada's not going to have so much of the ball. Uh, and hopefully I think that that kind of opponent maybe plays to Canada's strengths a little bit more in terms of allowing them to play in transition and, and, and really unleash their weapons they have um, on the counter-attack. So there's reasons for me to, you know, to, to be optimistic going forward here as, as much as maybe on Saturday it wasn't a vintage Canada performance. In the end, it was enough to, to accomplish what they needed to accomplish. What a relief is the prevailing sentiment here. <laughs> it took until 90 plus one when Jacob Schaffelberg scored that second Canada goal where it was like, okay, they've done it. Uh, they labored to the finish line, but this is what the type of game where – it could be a little bit pragmatic where the result overrides and holds way more significance than any type of performance. They just had to get the job done. Interim manager, young team, hadn't played since November. What would the mentality be? Playing against a team that plays in a low block, something that has regularly and continues to uh, trouble uh, th this Canadian side. And they just had to find a way. And quite frankly, they just had a little bit more talent then well, for me, considerable more talent than their opponent. And they showed the requisite desire uh, and stick to itiveness to get through that game. So um, this is one of those rare occasions where I look at the result more than the performance we will obviously comb over the performance. It's worthwhile to do, but with so much ahead, it's just, it was unfathomable to think that this team wouldn't be playing at Copa America out of 2026, all the stakes, all the attention, all the opportunity that presents itself this summer. I mean, I just couldn't think so. I just couldn't picture them not being it. I'm, so I'm really happy for everyone involved in it within the Canadian soccer setup. 
Like, look, this hasn't been an easy transition from Herdman to Biello. Incomplete windows, then disappointment. Uh, this was the first time that they've been able to be come together, this new iteration of the group, and train for a week and just try to get to the finish line and get past it with, with a winning effort. And they did that. And I think that that's the overwhel overwhelming sentiment. It's relief. And now let's look ahead to some big games and some real tests where this team, plenty more questions are going to be asked of them. And that's where the focus turns from here. I'll make mine short and sweet. Um, it's a relief because they're through. And this is what everyone wanted that follows this team. This will not be a game where you look at how many corners that were quality or the, <laughs> the, the pass completion or like all these one. things that – that oh, I yeah, want to go one, deep two. into. Yeah, <laughs> you, you don't want to talk about, but they got the job done. They got two goals. And Wheels is right. They had a bit more quality than, than Trinidad did um, on the day. And like, you look at the collar and finish. And I said to you at halftime, Jenko, I was like, I didn't want to say the world is over because there's two halves in football. But the first half just looked stale. They didn't look like a team that was training for five days or a team that knew each other. They're kind of just like, it seemed rusty. It, it seemed a bit like they needed to unhook the wagon a bit. But... They still had that quality go and, and, and win. And then now they get to the fun stuff in the summer. So elated for the group. I think one of the things that the Canadian soccer supporter was most curious about going into the camp was going to be the selection. Obviously, the veterans that were held out of the team for the cultural reset that we heard so much about. Canada first from Stefan Ustakio on down and has replaced the Brotherhood. And, and with all of this, it was going to be a lot of pressure on Morbiello because if Canada lost that game, I think we'd be talking today about the fact that Morbiello no longer has a job. I think the pressure was that high on the interim gaffer. Gareth, however, <laughs> the question becomes, have we seen enough from Moro to be convinced that he is the man to lead Canada into the Copa America? Is there enough time for Kevin Blue and company to find a new voice? Obviously, this, this question hasn't changed so much after just the one performance in Trinidad and Tobago. So let me ask you this instead to put your prediction hat on. Will Moro Biello be the man leading Canada into Copa America? If I'm a betting man, and I am. <laughs> Famously. Uh, uh, I don't think that he will be the, the manager of Canada come this summer, but I can't say that with any kind of certainty because we're just not sure how this process will play out. Heading into this game, for me, it was a no-win scenario for Mauro Biello because of his commitment. Like, Mauro's a great guy, and he's fully committed to Canadian soccer, and he's fully committed to this group. But... If they went on and smashed Trinidad and Tobago in this game, uh, commentary would have been, well, well, it's just Trinidad and Tobago. That's what you're supposed to do. If they went on to, to lose, he's still in this unenviable position where he still has something to offer to Canadian soccer, but you know, back-to-back -back losses that way just wouldn't have looked good. Winning this way, still, there's no long-term job security for him in this role. Do I think that this team needs an outside voice, someone to come in and really take this team forward? Yes, a transformational figure that's going to really stamp a new identity on this team. Like Canada first, what, what, I understand this quote-unquote cultural reset, but with similar players, similar faces, I just, I'm just not sure how deep you can go. Even Morrow admitted that just in one window. International football is tricky that way. But if you bring in another manager, with, with a resume, with ideas from abroad on how to take this team forward. I think that that's the way to invoke some sort of longstanding or bigger longstanding reaction from this group. And look, it's been 200 in what, 10 days now since Herdman stepped down as, as manager of this team. And they still have a man with an interim tag. How long did it take to hire a general secretary? Kevin Blue comes aboard. He's new to the soccer world. Which quote unquote experts is he talking to that are going to lead him in the right direction whose resume is on the table who's end up pulling pulling the resume i mean this job gets a whole lot better because of what ollie said some big games coming up copa america this summer but if we're looking for timeline like a new manager needs to be hired within the next four to six weeks like we're at the end of march here like the tournament and games are going to be played early June. You want a manager that has a good idea of what the players are all about, what the talent pool looks like, and is able to execute some kind of design going to this summer. You just don't want to show up to Copa America and, and, and be like fodder, you know, roadkill for the other teams to just drive all over. You want to go in and make a real concerted effort, concerted effort here and get some really good teams. So the clock is ticking. Four to six weeks, I think a manager needs to be hired. If not... I think Biello and this group kind of 
see this team through the summer months and we'll see where things end up. Yeah, t- time is really tight. That, that's the biggest issue. And it's it's going to be the first real test, I think, of Kevin Blue's ability to lead a, a federation that's more dynamic, that's capable of taking decisions quickly, but doing so with, you know, proper rationale behind them, um, as opposed to the kind of soccer of the past, which would let something like this drag on for months and there'd be absolutely no chance that they'd have a new coach in place um, in, in time for the Copper America. So it's, it's going to be a real test. I, look, I, I think there is a role for Mauro Biello at Canada Soccer 100%. I just don't think it's as the head coach right now. Um, to me, this team needs fresh impetus. It needs a clean b- break from the last kind of World Cup cycle. And it needs someone to come in and, and set new standards. And I think you need an outside voice to come in and do that, whether it's another Canadian who's working in the club game or whether it's a foreign coach. But if it is a foreign coach... It just adds to the importance to me that we identify some people as well in certain roles in the Federation who are familiar with the Canadian soccer landscape, familiar with this team, the challenges that have faced this team uh, and the challenges that are going to exist going forwards as well. And I think Mauro Biello is is absolutely an excellent person um, to be in that kind of role, whatever you want to call it. You know, you look at U.S. soccer and I know we can't always do the direct comparison with them, but they have a sporting director in place. They have... Higuchi Onyewu, a former player, is the vice president of sporting, which isn't English, vice president of sporting. But you know what what the role is, right, of, in, in terms of bringing something, uh, bringing more kind of leadership and, and more direction to that program. So for, for me, it's not just about who the next coach is going to be. It's how we build a, a structure for this program and leadership for this program going forwards and really capitalize on a massive few years ahead. And it's not just a coach that is, is is going to be tasked with doing that. And I think Biello is certainly someone who can can play a role uh, within whatever that framework is. Well, we move this conversation along to one soccer's president of sporting, Jordan Wilson, as I ask for some <laughs> thoughts on performances from the Canadians. In studio, we were going back and forth and kind of thinking, thank goodness for Kyle Laren giving us an easy performance of the match because it was one of those where no one really grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck and demanded to be that top performance. But when you consider at least the positives or players that made a more a stronger impression on you, Jordan. What might one of those players be? First off, it, it goes really Ari if you put me in a presidential position in any type of capacity. So let's not do that. Um, but I said to you at the end of the game, which I really feel truly watching this team closely, that Canada plays in a competition. When they play a team that could really hurt them, I think they play their best self. That has a lot to do with what Wheels has said as well about low block and having more, more space to go and play and express themselves. But I still think that underdog mentality is within that team. So to play a team like Trinidad and Tobago, I never expected Canada to be 10 out of 10. I was hoping for it, but I know that's a difficult game for everyone to be their best. You predicted I think you in the middle. 4 0? Is that what you predicted? Four I nil? predicted 4. And to be honest, Wheels, if Halfway they score there, the chances, if they score the chances that they should have, like Laren's in the first half, David, been, I'll give that. It should be 3 4. It should have. 3 3 2? 3 1 in the game? <laughs> Anyways, I was continue. I was not expecting Trinidad to be flying on the counter like this, man. And I was nervous. Ask Jenkins at halftime. My hand was like this. And and you left me as well. I had to do that. That's the, from all the, the sugar you eat during the halves. Don't try fair. and blame the nerves on that. Fair, <laughs> fair, fair. I'm glad they got it done. But look, who stood out to me? I think when you're looking at this team, you can kind of pick the, the lineup most of the time, right? Nine or ten players. So for me, it's always going to be who's coming off the bench. I'm glad that Schwanier got a, got a sniff, but... Is that someone, is that a game where you're going to come out, come off the bench and, and be a, a world beater? No, I think for me, it's Jacob Schaffelberg looking at him because I think he plays a different way that Canada, they don't have a, someone like this. He's almost like an old school winger, like left footed, plays on the left side, shoots from anywhere, just wants to get up and down the wing and even admitted as well, talking to our, our Christian Jack that like defensively, he's like, oh, I don't, he, he feels a bit un, uneasy, but he just wants to go forward and wants to contribute. And I think for, for Canada, this could be an ace card. Yes, you know, you have the Lareas, the Adekube, the Buchanans, Davies, all these players that will probably play above him or definitely play above him. But he has something there. I think that chip on the shoulder as well he brings to the game. And I just want to see more of him going into Copa America and just all these important games in the summer. There's a role for him in the Canada squad, but he plays Alfonso Davies' position. So Davies actually pushed inside and kind of played between <laughs> Two strikers of w- when the change was made to bring him on. I love Schaffelberg. I think it was a huge mistake for Toronto FC to let a domestic player like him go. 
his directness, his pace, all, all those things. I mean, he, he absolutely stood out from the time he stepped on onto the pitch. For me, I think it was a mixed bag in terms of Biello in the formation. I think Jordan on the broadcast pointed out the run that Ugbo made helped create the goal, peeling off the defender, creating that space. And at times that looked to be the right move, but they played like this box in the midfield with Laren and David dropping so deep into those areas. For me, Jonathan David was the best player on the field, but he wasn't played in the role that suits him the best, like almost playing like a number 10, like an attacking midfielder. I want both him and Kyle Laren playing closer to goal. I understand sure. why he played that way, but can it end up being a little bit short in the midfield because of that? And I think it led to some of the struggles overall in, in the game. And it's not on necessarily Biello. I think he's trying to find a way to get his best players on the field. And quite frankly, central midfielder, that attacking midfield area, kind of really doesn't have anyone. So there's a huge gap in this team, and I think it affects the the, the, the performances down ballot. I mean, I, I I love David. Laren wasn't his best game, but he's so reliable. He's Canada's most reliable goal scorer. I think the two central midfielders in Eustachio and Kone did well for themselves, especially Eustachio understood that the physicality of the game, they needed to rise to the challenge. And a number of times he just came in with like crushing challenges, like no nonsense stuff. Sometimes that you require in that area. So central midfield is going to be one of the areas that continue to monitor with this team. Cause you have two really good players in Kone and Eustachio. Who else is capable of joining that group? Big question mark going forward. Yeah. Yeah, like a, a few quick takeaways from me. I'll, I'll start with that one to pick up where Wheels left off. Central midfielder, I think they've got to find someone else to add to that twosome that they have of, uh, of Estacchio and Kone. And I think that would free Kone up to be more of that kind of attacking midfielder, that link player that, that we're lacking right now. Uh, so that's crucial. I think Air is probably top of that list. But, you know, you're talking about a player who has no experience, basically, in a Canada jersey. So if you're going to push him into a... A prominent role you've got to do it quickly and, and get him bedded in i didn't think joel wartsman did himself any harm at center back um you know there were some some tricky moments on the counter attack and i don't think he did too badly particularly if they're playing a back three he probably is the guy who's, who's the front runner for that position right now with victoria seemingly moved on uh, and then the biggest kind of stock up player the guys have already talked about it. Jacob Schaffelberg, I think, has gone from a fringe player who may or may not make the squads to he will be in the squad in June and, and be in with a very good chance of, of being on the plane uh, to Copper America. So that, that was a big moment for him, for sure. Well, we will, of course, continue to digest and decompress after this match. We'll have more on Trinidad and Tobago, the win, the performances, and, of course, Copa America, which is less than three months away Argentina, in the days to come Argentina. here Can't on wait. OST. Massive. It's going to be a brilliant, brilliant afternoon when that takes place in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs>